Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Innal hamdanillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'ghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'du alhamdulillah all praises be almighty god who has given us all the sustenance which we need alhamdulillah my dear brothers and sisters in islam inshallah today's kuliah zuhur will be under recorded version as we all knows all mosques in singapore is closed for uh safety reason uh for two weeks inshallah so our today's kuliah zuhur will be under this recorded version and i hope all of those who are hearing my um kuliah zuhur my sharing session today i hope all of you all are in a in a healthy and a good health inshallah Okay, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we are still in a discussion in Kitabul Jamia fi Babil Adab. Last week we have discussed the first hadith regarding the rights of a Muslim towards another Muslim. There's a six, or we use the word duties. A Muslim has six duties towards another Muslim. When you meet, first is when you meet him. You greet him with salam, which means you say salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So in this time where we are facing this COVID virus 19, so it is also we must remember that shaking of hand. We try not to do that. We follow the salam mufti by putting our hands. On our chest. In the same time, we must remember that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam last time Afshulus Salam. By saying Afshulus Salam, we we say out the salam. So it doesn't matter if we don't shake hand. Okay, so we say out the salam. I believe last week in our this hadith session, I also touched on that. So just a revision, recall. Okay. And meet someone, we say salam. If we are we are unable to say salam, maybe the person is from a far distance away from us. We just give a smile, or maybe we are in a car. The person is in another car, another vehicle. We can just knock our head, okay, by knocking our head, which shows that it's a sign of we are greeting the person. Next, when he invites you, respond to him. When someone invites us for any. Functions, wedding fees. When the function which there are some fees, which is some food ordered for us, we must attend. If we are unable to attend, tell them in advance, or maybe we have a manner to just WhatsApp to tell them sorry to them not able to attend. Second, when he asks for advice, we advise him. We advise a person which we knows, if things which we don't know is beyond us, we tell him nicely and we direct him to the right person. Uh. Next, when he sneezes and says "Alhamdulillah," praises Allah, say Ma, "May Allah have mercy on you," which means someone who sneezes and he says "Alhamdulillah" upon hearing this. We reply back, Ya Rahmukallah, and after hearing this, that person was says, Ya Dikumullah wa Yuslibalakum. This is how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us in his prophetic tradition. Next, when he's ill, visit him, and also last week I've touched this that for these current issues going on, so what what is the best place or best thing for us to do is when someone is ill, if he's at hospital. 
for current issue, we are not able to go to hospital. So what we do, maybe we can, we pray for the person. In the same time, we want to ask for his well-being. Maybe we can just WhatsApp or call him if he is able to talk to us. If he is unable to talk to us, we can ask his family members. If the person has been discharged from hospital, we seek the person's permission. Can we go and visit the person? If he says, okay, fine, come. Then we go. If not, just send our salam to him or her. And in the same time, if we are feeling unwell, we don't go and visit someone who's not feeling well. Or even though someone is feeling well, also we don't go and visit. It's strongly not advised. As Rasulullah said, La darara wa la dirar. Do not harm yourself and do not harm others. Always remember this hadith, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. If you understand this hadith, inshallah, we know how to react towards to it. Lastly, when he dies, follow his funeral. Uh, so when someone dies, we attend to his funeral. We perform that funeral prayer, which is in Mazhab Shafi'i. It is Fardu Kifaya. Even though it's Fardu Kifaya, we try to attend and pray. Perform that janaza prayer. The more people pray, inshallah, Allah SWT, the more sins of that disease, Allah will forgive. Inshallah. Then followed by, we are able to send off the janaza to his um, grave, which is at Pusaraman. We will try our best to go and send. As this thing also same thing. If we are not feeling well, please, we don't attend in a gathering to a funeral prayer or send off the janaza. Because whatever we are having, any diseases or illness, it may spread to others. Okay. This was the hadith from the previous. Now, inshallah, today's discussion. Today's hadith. وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ أَنْ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أُنْذُرُوا إِلَى مَنْ هُوَ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَلَا تَنْذُرُوا إِلَى مَنْ هُوَ فَوْقَكُمْ فهو أجدر أن لا تزدر نعمة الله عليكم متفق عليه. نريد أبو هريرة رضي الله عن الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول: "صلى الله عليه وسلم قال: "Look at those who are less fortunate than you, and don't look at those who are more fortunate than you, so that you will not underestimate the favors Allah has bestowed upon upon you." Agreed upon. Which means this hadith been uh, reported by Imam Bukhari and Muslim rahimahumallah ta'ala jamiyan. Okay, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. This hadith is actually Rasulullah SAW wants to teach us to look at those who are less fortunate. Which means those who are under us. Don't look at those who are above us. If we look at those who are above us, we will not be able to feel thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give me give you all an example. If for money-wise, if I'm going to, I take myself an example. Eh? If I am going to look at those who are richer than me, I will not feel fortunate. And I will tell myself that whatever I'm having now is not enough. I want to work more hard to earn more than that person whom I'm comparing with. What will happen? I'll be working and working and working and I will never say Alhamdulillah. I will never say Alhamdulillah. What is the meaning of Alhamdulillah? All praises be to the Almighty God. All praises be to the Allah. Why is it important for us as a Muslim to say Alhamdulillah? Because... We are showing our thankfulness to Allah SWT. This is one of the way. Then other way people say suju shukur. We persuade the shukur to Allah SWT. Uh, some of them say we always pray to Allah SWT. So when I look at this person who is higher than me, I will say that not enough. I will be working and working and working until I may miss out my prayers. And I will not be saying Alhamdulillah because I say this is not enough. But in a reverse way, I look at someone who is under me, who is less fortunate. Maybe the person's earning is enough for two days eating, two days meal. 
But for myself, maybe to this earning, I can keep to two to three days. So let me take this uh, picture as an example. So at, for that person, if I look at that person, I will say, Alhamdulillah, what Allah has given me is more than enough. If I look at that brother, Allah Akbar, his earning is enough for today. He don't know what's happened. What? How his earning going to be for tomorrow? Uh. But if I'm going to look at the first picture, where when I compare with someone who's more fortunate, I will never say Alhamdulillah. Uh. I will not be thankful to Allah what He has given me. So that's why my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. So this is one example for us to have a clear picture. Inshallah, I will explain more. Okay. So this is the introduction of this hadith. So what this author, Imam Al-Hajar, Imam Al-Hafiz Ibn Hajar Asqalani said, okay, for his explanation for Unzur ila man huwa asfala minkum. Look at those who are less fortunate than you. Uh, he have given some uh, his view. Okay, this hadith is an encouragement to always compare one's financial condition with that of someone less fortunate. So such a thing generates the feeling of God consciousness without one's heart, constantly reflecting upon the people who are financially better off than oneself only helps to enhance one's greed, which in turn leads to a feeling of dissatisfaction and jealousy. You see, subhanallah. Even the author himself also gives his view by giving a footnote explaining that this hadith encourages us by not looking people who is above us. We cannot, we only apply this for everything except for knowledge. I remember when I was studying this hadith in my school, my lecturer, my ustaz who was teaching this, Hafizullah, okay, he explained that when we look at this hadith, we can compare with us between myself and other brother for everything except for knowledge. In a way that when I look at that brother, okay, I don't see those who are higher than me. If I look at those who are higher than me in knowledge ways, I always say my knowledge is important. For example, I'm looking at someone who's a PhD holder. Then I'll be saying that my knowledge, hey, sorry, 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 not a PhD holder. If I'm looking at someone who is lower than me for knowledge wise, then I will be saying that my knowledge is enough. If I look at those who are higher than me, I will say the knowledge which I'm having now is not enough. I will need to strive harder to gain more knowledge. Huh. But for other Besides knowledges, for example, if I'm looking at money-wise, I'm looking at health-wise, family-wise, all the nikmat Allah gave me besides knowledge, I will need to look at those who are lower than me. Then I will say that Alhamdulillah Allah has given me, for example, health. If I look at someone <coughs> who is lower than me, that means in a way that whose health condition is not as healthy as mine. When I look at him, I will say, Alhamdulillah, Allah has given me good health. We can, we can witness certain things in our YouTube or maybe Facebook people share. There are some people who cannot walk, but they crawl to the mosque by using some plywood and there's a tire below and they will be, you know, using two wood at the side and rolling to the mosque. When we look at these kind of people, we ask ourselves, we are so healthy in a week besides Salat Jumaat, so besides Jumaat prayer. How many times we attend to the mosque? How many times we go to the mosque for prayers? We don't talk about now, the mosque closure, but we talk about 
before that. Or maybe after that, inshallah. So we should ask ourselves in that way. Huh. So this is what it means. Look at people who are lower than you in all these things. For knowledge-wise, don't look at people who are lower than you. You will be saying that that one is already enough for me. That means the person lower than me, Alhamdulillah, my knowledge more than him. I need to go and pursue or need to upgrade myself. No, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. That is a wrong mindset. For knowledge-wise, we always look at people who are higher than us. Inshallah, we will have that encouragement for us to pursue our studies. To gain more knowledges. To attend more lectures. To read more books. Knowledge is not only by reading books. We need to sit in lectures. We need to hear lectures. And also I remember what my lecturers told me. Knowledge are around us. What we see, all that are knowledges. It will also make us things. Uh, so that's why it's very, very important for us. For knowledge wise. For otherwise, we look which is lower than us and we always say Alhamdulillah. Never ever we <coughs> feel that things is not enough um, and we don't overconfident also. Okay, in Islam, don't be overconfident in certain issues. Always remember, we must always, Islam teaches us that we try our best, we work hard, we tawakal to Allah, we doa to Allah. Uh, if you don't strive hard, you leave it to Allah, you doa. It's impossible. For example, tomorrow is your exam. Tonight you open book, you just flip through. Tomorrow you sit for the exam paper. After they say, I leave it to Allah for the result. If you pass, that's your rizki. If you don't pass, that's it. You don't say this is a takdir. Because you did not work hard. Unless you work hard, you try your best. Then you go and sit for the exam. And that day Allah makes you to forget things. And there's a wisdom behind that. And you always doa. Doa for, may Allah give you the strength to able to accept what the result is. When we look at the story of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was a man who brought the camel to the mosque, but he did not tie the camel. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, Oh brother, why did not I tie? I tawakal to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He says, tawakal means you have to tie the camel and you leave to the mosque. You leave, you enter the mosque, sorry. After that, when you come out, if the camel is not there, that means there's no risk. Uh, so you see, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this also tawakal means you do something. The same thing, we go to the mosque, we leave, in our, we leave our slippers, our shoes outside, we leave it in a proper way, and all mosques in Singapore also prepare for us a proper shoe rack. So we put it nicely over there. And we bismillah, we go in, we enter the mosque, we perform our prayer, whatever we need to do, we, perform, we leave the mosque, upon our leaving, our shoes are there, alhamdulillah, if it's not there, inna lillah. Okay, that's not our risky. So you must understand also. So the same thing goes where all of us, our risk already been written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the soul been given to us when we was in our when we were in our mother's womb. Uh, where we know that in hadith 40 where Rasulullah SAW says uh, where the angel angel of Ruh will come down. And will give the angel will give the roh to the to the uh, fetus in the star, the mother's womb, and four things will be wrote down. Okay, one of them is that the risk. So risk already wrote down, but it doesn't mean oh my risk already Allah wrote down already. So I just sit at home, I shake my leg, so the money will come. No, we have to go out. We will have to. Look for it. So that's where we mean we work hard. There's an example for a bird. A bird will leave the baby and it will fly to look for food. So the tawakal to Allah SWT is very strong because the bird will not know how many food, how many worms it can get. But at the end, where the baby is waiting for the mother, the father to come back to feed them. And they come back, inshallah, with that. So what is their risk for that day? That is their risk. 
So the same thing when we link, when we look today for this uh, virus, COVID-19 virus, it is been and it will be affecting most of us, especially our brothers and sisters, those who are freelance, those who are maybe working in a company where need to take unpaid leave. There is also followed by taxi drivers, grab drivers, and all of these things. And remember, and we believe that inshallah there will be a wisdom behind this virus which Allah SWT has given us. It is affecting everybody, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. We must understand the situation. We must always be strong, united, and we must always remember to pray Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. In this situation, I strongly appeal from everyone: we should be doing a lot of tahajjud prayer, wake up at night, and do a lot of doa. Even we do kunut nazila in every prayer at home. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala cure those who are suffering from this virus and may Allah SWT safeguard all others who are not affected from this virus will not be affected from this virus and also may Allah SWT remove this virus from us as soon as possible and may all of us able to perform our Ramadan Ibadah in the month of Ramadan, especially of fasting, our Tarawi prayers, our iftar and kiamulai, which is really very near next month, so that all of us are able to do everything well. Amin ya rabbal alamin. So inshallah, for today's sharing session is for this hadith as an introduction. Inshallah, next week, Allah wills, we will continue our session. With our uh, elaborating more on this hadith. Thanks a lot for your time. So before I end this session, may we recite Surah Fatiha and end with a du'a. May Allah SWT give us a good health and may Allah SWT cure all those who have been affected with this virus and also may Allah SWT safeguard all of us from this virus. Amin ya rabbal alamin wa ala adhini ala adhini ati salli al-fatiha A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Maliki yawmid din Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Indina surat al-mustaqim Surat al-lazhin anamta alayhim Ghayri al-makhdubi alayhim Waladhalin amin Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى العفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ حديتنا وحبلا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا ولوالدينا وارحمهما كما ربيانا السخارة ولجميع المسلمين والمسلمات وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء من والأموات ربنا حبلا من أزواجنا ذرياتنا كرة عيون واجعنا المتقين إماما اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جلت سهل وأنت تجل حزن إذا شئت سهل اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جلت سهل وأنت تجل حزن إذا شئت سهل اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جلت سهل وأنت تجل حزن إذا شئت سهل ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار وكن عذاب النار وكن عذاب النار وصلى الله لسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك أتوب إليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم العصر إن الإنسان في خصل الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتصب الحق وتوصب الصبر Thanks a lot for your time in listening in my small sharing session InshaAllah we meet again next week أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لازم لي ولكم وبالله تلف الهداية والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.